The motor scooter as we know it hit the streets just after World War II. Europe was rebuilding its devastated infrastructure, and the scooter offered affordable transportation at this critical time. So in a small way, it helped put the post-war economy on the road to recovery. Many decades after it was first introduced, the scooter is still big on the streets, and the uncertain cost of fuel is one reason why. Production begins with the step-through chassis. It's often built on a tubular frame, but at this factory, they have a unique approach. Robots join three pieces of molded steel together by executing hundreds of precision welds. This transforms the three molded pieces into one solid chassis. After rust proofing and priming, the chassis gets a paint job and a clear protective veneer. They cure the finish by baking it on. Then they polish away any imperfections. The chassis moves down the line where a technician installs its radiator system. The next assembler clamps the radiator's wiring and hoses to the vehicle framework. Some plastic edging helps define the lines of the scooter. This model receives a four-stroke 150cc engine, which will make this scooter a bit more peppy than some. It also has an automatic transmission. Once the rear wheel has been installed, the worker hoists the engine over to the chassis. He guides it into place just behind the passenger seat and then bolts it to the steel framework. Next up is the steering column with the front brakes and wheel hub already attached. The technician assembles it to a front fender, then inserts the steering column in its slot at the front of the scooter body. Securing it is a delicate business. He tightens this special tool to gently squeeze the assembly together. This technique prevents damage to the components. The handlebar is loosely screwed into place for now, but will be properly tightened down later. This scooter's front wheel has a 12-inch rim. That's quite a bit bigger than those on early scooters. The bigger wheels add stability and allow this scooter to reach a higher speed than its forerunners. To illuminate the road ahead, this two-wheeler will need a headlight. It mounts onto the handlebar. A technician then puts this scooter to the test. She checks the headlight and all the signal lights. She engages the motor and throttles up to check both wheels and the speed gauges. Once it gets the okay, a worker installs the cover on the horn and then accessorizes the scooter with pieces of trim. And now, they install the scooter's saddle on a hinge over a storage compartment. Another buff and polish makes this machine gleam. The worker then installs pop-out footrests for the passenger. After one last shine, it's over to the quality inspector. That's the lady in yellow. She scrutinizes the vehicle from all angles. And when she gives it the green light, this scooter is ready to merge with traffic. Life on the street can be tough, but this design has had a lot of road testing over the years, and that's what makes the motor scooter a classic.